good morning, ladies and gentlemen, on this Wednesday edition of Ask the Theologian. Welcome. This is Ask the Theologian on the road. I happen to be on vacation, as uh, you may know if you've been watching this the last few days. And because of that, I am uh, giving today a half hour pre recorded broadcast. If you're watching on Worship, excuse me, yeah, if you're watching on Worshify, there is no chat available. But if you're watching on YouTube, there is a chat. If you happen to be watching at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and uh, this uh, abbreviated broadcast will go a half hour today. In this abbreviated broadcast, you are able to chat and you are able to ask questions. Put the word question first, or if you want to be on the safe side, why don't you go to askthetheologian.com and we'll put that uh, in. This is Wednesday. Normally we, we, normally, we do the Gospel of Mark on Wednesday night. I will not be here uh, for, uh, for, for that particular broadcast tonight, uh, but look forward to uh, taking care of all of you in uh, what you've got. Let's uh, let's see. Let's get right into our uh, questions uh, today here, and um, let's go with Manny in San Antonio. Hey, a couple of questions from Manny in San Antonio. One's a logistics question real quick. He says, uh, wh- what do I need to do to get the underscore line on the verses when I go to Biblify? And uh, and and I I had this question before, but I misanswered it because I, I misunderstood what he was asking. And uh, what he is asking is uh, this little line right there. See that underscore? This is Romans chapter 10, verse verse 14. There's a little line under there and a little line above there. Now, here's what you do to do that. Let's let's go to, I'm going to go to a place, uh, let's say Job chapter 1. Uh, and now I have no line there. If you open the side, the, the, uh, the side panel right here, it's this little button, the sidebar right there, and you open notes. If you are logged in, if not, you can make uh, one, one, one line account uh, or one, one account one time, make it in there, and then click on the verse. Make sure, open notes, make sure right down here it says, my notes on Job 1.1. You want that verse to match up. Then if you put in your note, I'm just going to say my note, and you save that note. Okay, there's the note, Randy White, my note, and now, looky there, there is a line. But let's go back, uh, where were we, about uh, Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 14 or so. There's a line below and a line above. That means I have a note, my friend has a note. If I click on Romans 10, 14, notice right over here, it showed Romans 10, 14, and here is my friend's note, David Van Houten, and here is my note, Randy White and uh, DVH7. Uh, now, you follow friends with the tab right there. Just click on that. Find someone interesting like uh, Manuel, uh, who is not there, uh, but uh, Nathan would be there. There you can go. You can... Um, you can, you can. I think I'll follow Nathan Burr right there. He wrote that nice little book uh, called uh, um, "Rights or Wrong." about the Declaration of Independence, rights or wrong. He he compared the Declaration of Independence to the Word of God. It's very interesting. So. That was the short answer for that question. But now let's get into uh, the uh, the biblical question which is where where oh where did they go you know manny maybe i was wrong maybe that was the only that, that was the only i thought i had too many questions but they were the same question uh sorry about that let's hit um let's hit helen uh nope already had that question sorry about that i'm i'm going through it, trying to figure you know i don't read my questions ahead of time and sometimes I don't clear my question box ahead of time either. So let's get into it. Uh, Let's go with Jay in Tennessee. A question about Acts chapter 14, verse 27. And the uh, passage of uh, Scripture, when they were come and had gathered together, they rehearsed all that God had done to them and how he had opened the door of faith 
unto the Gentiles. Okay, the question is, who is he that opened the door of faith to the Gentiles? Is it God or could it be Paul? Jay asks. It's a good question. The assumptions uh, way to look at things. Uh, and then he says, I think they is referring to Paul and Barnabas. Okay, be persnickety about the pronouns. I love it. I don't have my little thing here that says it, but there we go. Let's uh, pick up onto it. And when they were come. Uh, now, they probably again, uh, Paul and Barnabas. When they ha were come to, um, where are they? Antioch or somewhere like this. Uh, perhaps Jerusalem. Uh, I believe it's Antioch. When they were come and had gathered the assembly together, they, Paul and uh, Barnabas, I believe again, rehearsed all that God had done with them. Pronouns are not always easy. Let's, uh, let's put that in a different color because them is obviously different from they. They rehearsed all that God had done with them. Well, you know, I said that's different. I think it's the same thing. Let me let me back up there. Uh, Paul, let, let's, let's take it as Paul and Barnabas, even if we're wrong. Paul and Barnabas rehearsed to the church all that God had done with Paul and Barnabas and how he, here's our question. We're going to put that, let's put it in blue, how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Who are we talking? Who is he? Could it possibly be they, Paul and Barnabas, were talking about how he, Paul, had opened the door unto the Gentiles? There is a sense in which Paul did open the door of faith unto the Gentiles. It was his job. Paul, you go out and do it. I have commissioned you. I am making this your job. And so I want you to go out and do it. So it's not, it's not a huge problem theologically to make that. Or is it referring to God? And I think obviously that's not a huge problem as well. But, uh, but let's, let's get in there. I want to uh, bring up the, uh, the Greek interlinear here, if we can. And uh, let me let me uh, pop this all out here for you. And uh, we are um, we're looking at Acts fourteen twenty seven, and we've got hala some Greek. Okay. Uh. So having arrived and having gathered together they declared there's the, the the subject and the verb a little bit paul barnabas arrived paul barnabas gathered together and they declared to the assembly all they declared everything to the assembly all that god did God is the subject, did is the verb. All that God did with them and that he opened, aorist, active, third person, to the nations, a door of faith. Now, here's, the, uh, um, let me answer your question, Jay. We don't know. But there's reason to make good speculation that we're talking about God here. Kind of the rule of thumb, but you know the problem with a rule of thumb is it has too many exceptions. But the rule of thumb is you go with, let me bring the Greek back up here. You, when you have something open-ended here, like a pronoun here, this pronoun is actually embedded within the verb, but nonetheless, it's there. He will take it. When you have one that is not connected to anything, the rule of thumb is go with the closest. The closest singular would be God. So God opened you you could argue, no, we've already got God as the subject for did. But having arrived, having gathered together, 
they declared. You kind of got two for one here. Could you have one for two? One subject for, for, for two verbs, God did and God opened to the nations a door of faith. I, I think you could go either way. And I think that, let's see, would there be a valuable reason, maybe, but let's think through. Would there be a valuable reason to say this is Paul that opened, not God that opened? I think there are a couple of places and Romans, uh, excuse me, Acts, uh, this is Acts 14, 27. I think it's in Acts chapter 13, where it talks about all that were appointed unto eternal life believed. And I have, I've taught that passage several times before, even on this program. And I have taught that as Paul is the one that ordained them. I think that doesn't say appointed. I believe it says ordained. Paul is the one that ordained because the word there means order, to set in order. He set in order their thinking. And it's, and it's not, therefore, a Calvinistic verse. So would a Calvinist take this and say, look, God opened the door of faith to the Gentiles and use that to support Calvinism? Maybe. I think I still personally would say, let's let God open the door to the Gentiles, because that's really what he does in giving the mystery to Paul, is that God opens the door to the Gentiles. He brings down the barrier wall, the wall of partition. He... uh, he takes those who are outside of the covenants and commonwealth of Israel, having no hope, no, no, no God, no hope in the world, and he gives them a hope. So God is the one that opened that door. But that does not require a Calvinism at all. All that it requires is that now Gentiles can, to fill in a little bit more information there, Gentiles can freely receive the gift that God is freely giving. So you, so, so if if the if the purpose is saying this is Paul, not God, is to overcome a Calvinist argument, I think I would go at it a different way. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's I want to be persnickety. I want to figure out what kind of meeting they're having here when they gathered together. Could it be that they? gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he, Paul, I I think to do it, you would have to show this uh, playing with they and he, that it's Paul and Barnabas, but sometimes it just goes down to he. And you might be able to find that in Acts 14, Acts 15. If you could especially closer in the proximity, you might come up with a decent argument and say, hey, they're, they're talking about Paul's ministry. They want, and, and the book of Galatians might even help you here, they want those in Jerusalem to know that Paul is out here doing something that is brand new, something that is very different. So I would not be opposed to it. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting thought. I, I, I think it's an uphill battle, but I'm not opposed to it. I think it could, I think it could probably work there and uh, carry that out. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks. Thanks uh, very much uh, for that. Let's uh, let's go to Davy in Northern Ireland. Good to see you. Uh, uh, this question came in, uh, I think, on Monday. And the question is, what is the order of Paul's writings? You know, There's a certain degree to which the answer is we don't know. But inquiring minds want to know, right, Davey? So you and I are not going to settle for we don't know. Surely there's some degree of evidence that can be given. And fortunately, we have the, the, um, the book of Acts, which includes so much of Paul's work. And we can kind of see when Paul went to various locations that he happened to write to, and we can then sort of 
speculate a little bit, and there is some speculation on this, and we can, well, well, I mean, we can definitively say, well, it wasn't before that date, and if we can nail down that date, then we got to go after that, and then we can say, and it would seem like, 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 and therefore this became before that. And so there is some speculation on it. The the uh, the the the, m the Bible very rarely gives us dates on something. Sometimes it does. You know, uh, Isaiah said in the year, uh, uh, you know, of King Uzziah, the year of the earthquake, well, pardon me for paraphrasing that in Isaiah chapter six, there are places where it gives dating, but not so much in Paul's epistles. We have to go by the book of Acts to determine the Pauline epistles, I think. Now, typically, we say that 1 Thessalonians was written first. And again, this is putting several things together in Acts. Uh, it is tradition. You could argue that it's not. But a lot of things do fit about, you know, taking 1 Thessalonians and making it a very early book. 49, 50, 51, right in there, is certainly possible. Uh, dealing with, you know, the things that First Thessalonians deals with, especially in chapter four and five, which is the rapture and the return of the Lord, which would be a natural kind of thing to say, hey, where is he? And sort of to start in and, and write on that. It makes sense. I think Galatians probably is fairly early, would not necessarily have to be. It's It's got to be after the Jerusalem conference, because you got Peter and the confrontation with Peter, you know, where he uh, had been eating with the Gentiles and then they came. That's got to give you a few years in there. So it can't be before the Jerusalem conference. So that's probably going to put it, let's just use a rough number at 50 AD. You got to go somewhere after 50 and enough time for some things to take place. Uh, and for the wholehearted agreement of Acts chapter 15 of the Jerusalem conference to the, the, the excitement about that, that wholehearted agreement to wane a, a little bit by the time you get there. So, you know, you're probably talking 55 at the earliest for the book of Galatians, 55, 56, 57 uh, in there. Uh, Second Thessalonians, I should have put, probably just put that along with First, Thess First Thessalonians. It's going to be a year or two later. Uh, jump through there. Uh, First, Second Corinthians, Romans are going to be probably next. Which order do they come in? It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I don't even. I don't know that we can tell, but probably I would push those to late fifties. Uh, then you've got what are often called the prison epistles, Ephesians, Philippians, uh, uh, Colossians, and Philemon, in which Paul's ministry seems to be pretty advanced. He's definitely revealing the mystery in some pretty strong ways. There is some indication that he's in prison, which puts him, you know, probably post-60, 60, 61, 62 in there to, 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 to get him in prison. Now, this is such a, it's more art than science because there's a number of ways we could get, and th there's, there's almost a 10 year sway in this, you know? So if I say, Hey, it was written, you know, in 57, give or take 10 years. That's that's a twenty year span. That's it's Paul's entire ministry. Could be written anywhere, and most of them you could do that. So huge area for argumentation here. I'm going more by what we think. If if we made a bunch of assumptions, and if all these assumptions are right, then you know this kind of order that I'm telling you would would uh, go the, to put uh, those those prison epistles post 60 AD, let's say. And then a few of those individual epistles at the end, you've got uh, probably Titus and then first and second Timothy as the end. Second Timothy certainly looks like, hey, this is the end. He, 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 I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, he says. Uh, so there are some things there that really do sound like a man who is closing out his ministry. Well, you know, what happens from there? So if we put that maybe even late 60s, I doubt that Paul 
lived to see the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, I would go ahead and put Hebrews in there. I'd put Hebrews about 69 AD, personally. Uh, again, plenty of arguable points there, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily hold it against someone if they, if they reordered that just a little bit uh, and carried that out. Now, you know, some will say that Colossians is the last because isn't it Colossians? Pardon me for not uh, remembering the uh, term, but the, the the actual verse. But he talks about uh, fulfilling the word of God and. And some say, okay, well, the Colossians then that mentions that has got to be the last because it fulfills the word of God. I think that there is that interpretation of that, but it's clearly an interpretation. And I think you can interpret those words to be the Pauline, uh, the Pauline uh, doctrine fulfills the word of God. You don't have the whole word of God without the Pauline corpus, if you will, uh, and, the, and the, without the mystery. I would take it that way more than more so than to be the actual letter uh, letter of it all uh, right there. I hope that uh, helps, Davey. Uh, there's some interesting stuff about there. And, uh, you know, carrying that out and figuring that out uh, is uh, not always uh, an easy thing uh, to do, but uh, sometimes uh, sometimes does become interesting. Let's go to Sylvia in Indiana on today's abbreviated program. This may be a complex question questions, plural. Uh, as you know, I attend a church that teaches evangelical garbage. Uh, let's stop right there. You know, in my book, Evangelical Garbage, I talk about sometime you may eventually have to leave a church that teaches evangelical garbage. But I but I applaud those who can also say, okay, I'll take it slow. Because as we talked about, uh, I believe it was two days ago, I've got some fellowship here. I've got some friends here. I've got some ties here. There's, I, I, I am, I, I have, I take a little approach kind of like the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence said, you know, when the course of in, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one nation to dissolve its uh, uh, ties to another nation. I paraphrase that just a little bit. Uh, it, uh, it and it talks about how, you know, this should not be done lightly. We should consider this. We should state the grievances, all these kind of things. I think it's the same when you become independent from a church. So here, Sylvia says, I go to a church that teaches evangelical garbage. A woman who, uh, who, who rightly divides wants to leave and go to the Berean church in town. Uh, and I'm not sure, by the way, on the Berean church here, is it a right dividing church? Some churches, some, some right dividing churches call themselves Berean, but just other fundamental churches call themselves Berean too, so it's hard telling. I attended there. Uh, oh, the, okay, they say they are mid-Acts, which is uh, true, but they do not rightly divide. That that can be. There can be some sloppy Bereans, some sloppy right dividers that make you just as uncomfortable as in the evangelical church. Uh, they believe in rewards and crowns, which is pretty common. I think I'm kind of rare in that, that I do not believe in rewards and crowns. I've got my little book on that, uh, By Grace Alone, book led, I should say. Uh, I told the woman that. She stated that she would rather go there and be half right. Uh, I know how wrong my church is, but how do you know how much is right and wrong uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, which, which half you got right? Uh, in a church that just focuses on mid-Acts and thinks that people should just use the King James and an old dictionary without using Greek or Hebrew, isn't that like eating an apple with a worm in it <laughs> and just uh, cutting out the worm and eating the rest of the apple? Okay. Um, well, first of all, the, the, uh, the worm did not affect the rest of the apple. So go ahead and cut out the worm and just, just make sure you do cut out the worm. <laughs> but I like your illustration there, Sylvia. Uh, you know, this... I'm going to say it's a bit impossible for anyone to decide this and even you deciding, which you'll probably have to do someday. Obviously, you're dealing with it now. Do I stay or do I go? It, it You may make the wrong decision. 
you may you may leave later on and say why in the world did i do that uh there there's a little benefit and i can i sh i should have kept that and i didn't now i don't have either i don't have the worm or the apple you know to throw out the uh, the apple with the worm you want to keep the apple and in a lot of these churches there is some apple it's not all worm infested not always sometimes it's all worm infested but sometimes you can see these worms are propagating quicker than they did in king agrippa or was it i think it was agrippa you know the story so so what do you do and the and the challenge is you've got you've got friends and others and you know that one one wants to do one thing and other is not so sure it becomes monumentally challenging i don't think we can discount how challenging it is i don't think we should discount now some are granted and i know this some are more black and white cut and dried whatever you want to say and they're ready to quickly leave one go to another or just leave one this even this this certainly happens in marriages i i know many marriages where the husband is sick of the of the evangelical garbage but the wife she's okay or the wife is sick of it and the husband he's okay okay what do i do here how do i how do i deal with this and i am i am not one to say that if there's anything wrong you got to get out of there there, there are some I, I remember once years ago uh had this fellow working for me and this has been 15 years uh had this fellow working for me and it, he didn't always get everything right uh and i had a, a guy ask me he said, why why do you keep letting him work for you he's wrong here he's wrong there he's wrong and I said, well, he has a good heart. I don't know if it was the best answer, but his response to me was, how can you be wrong and have a good heart? I know sometimes, you know, I'm, so I don't care about your feelings, all that kind of stuff. But, but there, there, there are some strings that you have to consider and you have to, you have to deal with and you have to work. So all I can say, Sylvia, unfortunately, I wish I could say, hey, your friend is right, go. But maybe your friend's not right. Maybe maybe you're right to be a little more gracious, a little more patient. I here's what my, my dad said this once uh, after uh, he left the uh, Southern Baptist. He he said I found it a lot easier to leave a church than to find a church. We had a question about that basically yesterday. Someone said, "Hey, I left ten years ago. I still haven't found anything. I'm getting a little frustrated." it can so easily happen that you're sort of left out there with nothing and as we talked about yesterday there is a need for something in in our in our lives and uh, i had a friend uh, contact me after yesterday's program i was talking about the volunteer fire department he says that's why god invented pool halls <laughs> a little fellowship down at the pool hall well for sylvia and her friend that's probably not uh, sylvia i i would guess is probably not going to go down to the pool hall for the fellowship <laughs> but but uh you, you can do they even have pool halls i'm sure they do uh not like they did in the past but anyway uh such a such a difficult uh thing uh, and 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 it does have to do with some values sylvia wants uh a, a i don't i hesitate to use this term but i'll use it for lack of a, a better of a fuller right division right division can get sort of in this very basic mode this is all we do and you kind of repeat it just like the evan evangelicals do just like the fundamentalists do just like the Pro uh, puritans uh, excuse me yeah protestants do we get this narrow set of focus and we get stuck there Sylvia wants something a little more broad. Hard to find. What do you do? 
I am not going to be the one. I think I said this yesterday about something, too. I'm not going to be. The, maybe it's because I'm on vacation. I'm just so nice. I'm not going to be the one to point my bony finger and say, uh, thou shalt not. Thou shalt get out. Don't let the dust hit you on the way out or, you know, shake the dust off your sandals, whatever it is. So let me just say for uh, Sylvia and those in that uh, area, uh, my my prayers are with you. I wish I could uh, fully answer that and uh, get that uh, get get you a a good answer. Thank you. Okay, I've got some more questions and an abbreviated schedule today as I travel. My apologies. Once again, this is being premiered on YouTube tomorrow. I'm either going to be back live or I'll have another recording for you. Uh, sorry about that. I'm uh, not uh, exactly sure which. And we may get Pastor Mark back on uh, covering for us as well. But he is uh, Mr. Mominent this week as well. And I want to uh, prioritize uh, three precious little babies and the big brother as well uh and mark sanity uh so so we'll uh, we'll see uh how things uh, go sorry it's a little up and down this week uh, but uh, hey we'll we'll make it and uh, get back to normal soon thanks for being with us uh, here today on ask the theologian you can submit your questions i will get to your questions on askthetheologian.com there's a question box right up there at the top it's been good to be with you today sorry i uh was not uh, able to uh, read your comments live as we had the broadcast as we often do uh, but uh, it's been a joy having you from um, I started to say from Taos, Amer Taos New Mexico to across America and around the world but from Georgia from Florida wherever it is I am to across America and around the world I look forward to seeing you soon randywhiteministries.org thanks for those of you who push that donate button every now and then we certainly do appreciate it and uh, god bless you we shall see you soon